I'm going to tell you just straight so that we have this understanding. I'm crazy. And, and this crazy thing, I mean, it isn't a choice that I made, but basically it's about intelligence as alternative energy and the reality of who we are, human beings. And I think that we need to pay more attention to that reality of being a human being. So sometimes off in my crazy, I feel like I'm in a dimensional reality where we don't know who we are. We don't recognize ourselves. We don't understand the sounds that we make in this vibratory reality. You know, and then we don't know what our purpose is. You know, and, and I think when we look at what's going on in our lives, I think we need to remember that we're human beings. We're human beings. You know, we live in a predatory industrial technological reality where there's a small number of industrial ruling class that pretty much own everything. They, they take and they, re they repress the identity, the memory of being a human being. Because we become citizens, we cre they create these victim identities. We identify with a victim identity. So tonight I'm trying to talk to you as a human being. One human being to another, right? Without the other, without the victim stuff. Right, so in this technologic industrial reality that we're in, everything's going to ever happen in this dimensional reality that we're in is about energy. Now we're human beings. Human beings. We are human beings. When we say we're only human, we're, we're wrong. <laughs> you know? We're, we're just not making right sense. Because we are human and being. Human being. Right? And without the being part of human, we wouldn't be human. We wouldn't be alive without the being part. Now, and so when they mine fossils or the uranium out of the earth, it leaves behind poison and toxic waste. But well, when they mine the being part of human, that leaves behind poison and toxic waste, and that poison and toxic waste, these are the fears, doubts, and insecurities that become a part of our perception of self. And therefore, they form how we perceive reality. So every fear, doubt, and insecurity that you have, you didn't think it up, we didn't think it up. Somebody put it there. Somebody told us something. Somebody imprinted us with it, and we believed it. We believed it. Now, the power of our intelligence, we create our reality every, our reality every day. <laughs> The experience of feeling powerless, and while you're feeling powerless, how bad can you make yourself feel? And how does that affect the people that you interact with? It's not about have not having power. It's about not understanding power, but we have power. Now imagine, imagine if that power, the power we have to affect others through our negativity and our self-doubts, now imagine if that energy, that power was used clearly and coherently. See, what kind of effect that could have? Because everything is about energy. And energy flows, you know, when we think we project electromagnetic thought. Now part of this mining process, part of this mining process that happens is to take the human being and stop the human being from thinking, to replace thinking with believing. Get the human being to believe that believing is thinking. Now when you take the energy of thinking which is supposed to flow and you put it in to the energy of believing, well see, believing is like a cage. It's got its biases, it's got its prejudices, it's got its limitations, it's got its closed mindedness, believing. So when you take the energy of thinking and you imprint and program the human to not think but to believe instead. See, then this energy that's supposed to be flowing out into reality and helping to create because our creative intelligence is so powerful. But anyway, so it's taken and put into this cage of believing. See, then, so the energy's got nowhere to go. But it's energy, it has to do something, so it stresses and it builds inside. And because it's not really thinking energy, it's believing energy, it, it increases the fears, the doubts, and the stresses that become a part of the human being's life. And then the human being does not see clearly or coherently, does not think clearly or coherently. The human being now starts to make emotional decisions rather than thought out clear coherence. 
Either we believe or we think, but we can't do both. We can't do both. And it's not even about believing, so we, so we need to be careful about how we use that concept, that word, believe. You need to be very careful with it. Because remember, every fear, doubt, and insecurity, every self-dislike, every self-hatred, every self-cloud that we have about ourselves, somebody told it to us, somebody imprinted there, and we believed it. But I guarantee you, not a one of us thought it up on our own. <laughs> we're, not, we're not that normal. <laughs> so whatever's going on, that industrial ruling class, does not want us to think. Because if we think, we're going to create another reality. We're going to create a reality. So we need, but in, anyway, in order for us to have all that happen, we really need to identify ourselves as human beings again. We need to recognize that we're human beings and we need to understand what that is to be a human being because the only power we're going to ever have in this reality is in the being of a human being. You're going to have to look at the power. You know, you, you can tell yourself, we can tell ourselves, you can tell yourself that lie all you want, but do you feel politically powerful? You're going to have economic power? Do you feel economically powerful? You're going to have military power? Do you feel militarily powerful? Because well, see, part of this is sleight of mind trickery. See, we've been imprinted to believe that external things are power. See, so if we believe accumulation of money is going to make us powerful, or accumulation of politics, political votes is going to make us powerful, or accumulation of military access is going to make us powerful, see, then we will never recognize the reality of ourselves in relationship to power. Because we've defined it all as being external. Now, economics, politics, military, all of these things, they're an illusion of power, but in reality, what they are, they are access to authority. And there's a difference between authority and power. Actually, the people that don't really feel their power need authority to impose upon the others. But they weave an imprint to believe that that's where the power is. As a human, and maybe, maybe as a citizen, and what I call victim identities, all right? We're human beings. And ancestrally, encoded in our DNA, because every one of us is descended of a tribe. I don't care where we come from on this planet. At some point, we come from tribal origins. And in that tribal origin, in that genetic memory, we were all human beings. That's how we identified ourselves. And then as technologic civilization started to emerge and come out of the mist, right, then we started to get these other nationalistic identities. Then we started to get these other own property identities. I call victim identities. In reality, we're a human being. That's our primary identity. Primary identity. Human being. But all of these other identities, gender, race, all of these things have been turned into victim identities. Women relate to their identity as a victim identity. Men relate to their identity as a victim identity. And this is reality. You know, we may hide it behind these very prides and masks and disguises that we don't even fool ourselves with. But we relate to life from a victim identity. We have been imprinted to become afraid to think. I mean, in this, in the land of freedom, I hear the word freedom used so much. And I want to know why did they add dumb to it. Now I understand being free. I understand being wise. But freedom throws me. I mean, let's see here, the land of freedom. You gotta pay to be born. You gotta pay to die. And you gotta have money to spend the whole time in between. I mean, reality here, coherent reality. So where's the freedom? Where is the freedom? How many, I mean, because if, if we're talking about some, something starts to need making sense here. Something needs to start making sense here. I trust as human beings, if we recognize that we're human beings and we respect our creative intelligence, we can make sense.